Great companies come from the big dreams of determined leaders. That's how we see the role of the incredible founders Jungle Box, of those who dare to build the next transformative businesses of our generation. But this journey is anything but easy, especially over the last couple of years. Throughout the year, a number of those founders shared their own experiences with us. These are six takeaways from 2022 from founders who made it big. For many founders, creating the perfect product is a prerequisite to going into the market. But after raising over $5 million in 2022, that bike founder Son Nguyen and his team proved that product development is in fact a collaborative process with the end consumers. There were a lot of challenges uh, to get to this point. At first, we didn't have any customers. We deliver few bikes and they're, they're just like broken all the time. We didn't even have certification to run like legally on the street and, and all of that, right? I think it's very important that, you know, we uh, work with our customer directly to see like what is missing here. I only believe in you know working in a lab for like five years and then, and then come out with like a perfect product because I'm from software and I know that there is no perfect product. You just have to like keep iterating, release uh, new features, bug fixes like really fast, and work with the customers to to improve the, the product. And eventually, uh, more customers will come. You always need to have a very small set of customer, but you need to have customers. That said. The relationship between a business and its consumers is not strictly transactional. Increasingly, the term community is used when referring to a strong and active customer base. So what is the difference between a customer base and a community? The community, like you give them something and they give back to you. And in our case, I think our community give us a lot more. Because like a lot of our innovation, a lot of our uh, communications and a lot of like the things that we did actually came from them. So with Soko, we actually can understand what is the trend? Like, what are they looking for? And with that understanding, we can actually create something more relevant. And it's actually the, the, the community that came to us and said that you're our best friend because you're with us 24-7. Uh, uh, can, I can shop on and offline. I can find recommendations. We want to make sure that the holistic experience is for them. Last year, Sociola launched their own community-based social platform, pushing community empowerment a step further. Now, whoever is interested can hop on and build their own micro-communities and threads. And after changing the Indonesian market forever, Sociola is going global. In Indo, Sociola has helped like a lot of women like across Indonesia to get access to beauty products and make the experience better. So we want to replicate this in Vietnam. In essence, it's still the same. Like Sociola is your bestie, yeah. right? It's just like how we can adapt to the trend, how to, we can adapt to their language. Like, you know, not only language meaning like Vietnamese language, but it's more like the way they communicate, right? The, especially our audience. The image that we want to build there is the same. Like we want to serve them, like the consumer, to get the best beauty experience. But even with the right approach to product innovation and a vibrant community, Without capital, fast-paced product development cannot take place. So what are the next stepping stones towards your ideal growth vision? My approach is that valuations and, you know, the ticket size, the round size and everything is, is I would say, like, you know, number two or number three uh, factors for me. We're not, like, you know, just building a scalable business, right? But we're building, like, in a profitable business. And we're looking for investors that can really bring a value in a more of concrete way of like, you know, spending time with me. I mean, I'm a single founder, so I'm a first time founder. So there's a lot of things that I need to actually learn. And as a founder, you always have a lot of crazy ideas in your head. It's not always a good thing for a business. It could be like, you know, distractions as well. We're looking for founders that willing, like, you know, to really sit, you know, side by side with us and help us, like, you know, to, to, to push to the next level. As well as thinking about the financial side of the company, no matter what type of future vision a founder might have, one of the founder's main priorities is to nourish a culture which is built to last. At the heart of culture, I think it is this focus on customers. There's been a big debate whether employees come first or customers come first or shareholders come first and so on. I have come to the view that I think customers come first. And the reason for that is that if you truly build a customer value proposition that works and a culture in the company that you're trying to genuinely create value for customers, that permeates and creates a long-term view and a long-term culture of the company. You're not joining a company just becoming a machine, but you need to really believe on what we do. By default, we trust people. A lot of like you know team members that we have, then like you know take it as a very high ownership for whatever that they do. They will actively like you know looking for the best you know solutions for whatever the problems that they're working on. That's the mindset that like you know we uh, have been trying to actually implement here in the in the, in the company. 
And no matter at what stage your startup is at, we are very passionate, and so we felt like we can work 22 hours a day, right? And, and with that, you just want to take on things. And you want to keep the option value, right? Because you know what, some might not work. So I want to do as many things as possible, and maybe something will work. But sometimes doing less and making a decision is actually the best course of action. Soon we realize that to startups, it's not about how many you can work on, it's really about which other things you probably shouldn't work on. Sometimes to decide to work on something is far easier than to decide on not working on something. You can't bet on the whole basket. And you have to make a decision that this is the fight not worthwhile fighting today. I think that's really important, but it's really hard. Finally, with an increasingly interconnected world, it is many founders' dreams to expand beyond their original locations. And although today's technology enables businesses to do so with reduced barriers to entry, different regions mean different consumer habits. The company was actually started off as a technology solution for the small property owner. And he or she lacks the opportunity to get access to technology. And so Red Doors uh, was the technology which we kind of provided along with our brand. So the company has come a long way since then. Red Doors is the largest and fastest growing budget accommodation brand in Southeast Asia. To reach that status, Amit and his team had to adapt their model along the way. Now property owners look at us as, as a partner to do stuff with, which we, they can't do alone. One of the key learning during the expansion is that while 70% of the playbook remains the same, it's the 30% which makes all the difference. So we really need to go and understand the nuances of the market and then bring in our product. Otherwise, it gets more and more difficult. Even though Southeast Asia, ASEAN have a similar ethos, they are different countries. So you have to localize country by country and in some cases, region by region. As demonstrated by the testimonies of these founders, it is safe to assume that there is no single clear path to a successful future. But every successful startup's longevity, for the most part, seems to depend on the relentless pursuit to provide a real solution for the end consumer.